I want you to do it one more test, Gerardo. Test here, test it again. Um, okay, just wanted to say good morning, but of course it's evening in many places where our audience is and our participants. So uh, best of the day to everyone, no matter where you are. And he'll be jumping back in. I just started the audio recording and video recording. So that was it. You started us off, but you'll start us off again. We have a first batch in here this morning. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming in from various countries. You notice uh, that this is a Saturday. And this book that just came out is based on the Saturday class. The, the wondrous five-hour class that Dodzie drove all the way from Ottawa, Canada, to attend one day. Thank you, Dodzi, for driving 18 hours. Others of you flew from Finland, India, uh, all parts of the world, New Zealand, and, and, and various places to join Indiana University as Fulbright Scholars and were part of the Saturday class. It was a very special class indeed. Um, we have responding 24 different countries which is very much like the Saturday class was. It was a mini United Nations in that room with foods from all over the world, including Narit, bringing food from Israel. And we had food from Turkey and food from China and, and a wondrous, wondrous food that no one wanted to listen to my lectures in the class. Everyone wanted a break time, you know. Uh, so I know Simon was always leading people out the door to get the break time and then leading them back in to give a, a speech on what they learned from out the hallway, you know. So it's great to see everybody back and great to see the book published and have your wonderful pictures at the start of every chapter of the book and your bios. Um, uh, let me just tell you that Rutledge didn't always want to have their pictures and bios at the front of every chapter. It took a little bit, but we got them and I'm really glad that they're there that way. It's very unique. No other book from Rutledge that I'm aware of has pictures of all the authors and bios at the front. So that's one thing that's unique about the book that just came out. But the book was going to be called Making Impact. Um, and so you'll see the preface in chapter one and the last chapter, before making impact, time to make impact, after making impact. That's the, what made, how Mena and I structured it. Um, today is a way to make impact by having all of us come here today and um, share with each other uh, aspects of the story uh, of the book and what they've learned. Uh, Anissa Sari, one of my doctoral students, has to leave early. She and Mena and I have done research on MOOCs for the past almost seven years. Uh, she's going to do her dissertation on MOOCs in um, business schools. Uh, Anissa, you want to say a couple words to get us started? Okay. So thank you, Dr. Bong, for being uh, so flexible uh, by allowing me to say some words uh, before my, I mean, the first scheduled time uh, because I have to leave early for another commitment. So uh, I want I would like to congratulate Dr. Bong and also Dr. Zhu on the recent publication of uh, your book. Uh, you two did an excellent job uh, by explaining. Uh, I read the book and then I found out that you guys did an excellent job of explaining. In explaining, I mean the set of exemplary of teaching methods from around the world, from India, Cyprus, and then uh, I see some from the United States and also Mexico, and then also from Europe. So what makes uh, the book enjoyable to read is because all of the teaching stories in the book use the writer's perspective in describing their teaching methods and then its story clearly connects what the teacher wanted to achieve in their teaching and also explain how uh, they execute their teaching. And the conclusion, uh, it, I'm very happy to see uh, there are some lesson learned, suggestion, advice, and then also reflective questions. So as a reader, I found the book is really uh, helpful and then uh, it can be very beneficial for the readers. Uh, and also the book uh, make the difficult concept become clear and accurate. So I'm really happy to read the book. So I applaud uh, Dr. Pong and Dr. Zhu for having uh, the effort, the discipline, the energy uh, necessary to uh, frame and finish the book. So we, uh, again, congratulations on your achievement and all the best to you uh, too for writing more books in the future.
Thank you, and so we have one other person who's got to leave early, my former student, Fong Fong from the University of Houston. Fong, I see you here. We haven't tested your mic. Do you want to say a quick word before I go to a video break here? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this celebration. Yeah, uh, I had, sorry, I haven't got a chance to read the book in detail. Uh, but uh, I have read uh, uh, Dr. Bunk's other books on teaching technology and the MOOC, and uh, everything was uh, uh, terrific. And I remember he reminded me the happy days when I was uh, a student, a graduate student in his class. I was always very surprised and uh, uh, inspired by his uh, uh, energetic and uh, his interest and his way to encourage students to engage. So I want to say big congratulations to you and Dr. Drew for this book publication. And definitely I will read it very carefully and see, uh, I'm sure it can help me a lot in my current job. I'm an instructional designer and I would uh, recommend this book to uh, my colleagues uh, and uh, my uh, other faculties. Uh, I'm sure it can help uh, a lot of people in these uh, technology driven days. Thank you. Thank you, Fong. I forgot to say that everyone can say whatever they want in their toast, but they can't say anything nice about me. So, um, uh, <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, I'm going to go to try, I'm going to try and share my screen here. We'll see if it works. Um, and I didn't test this quite ahead of time. So I'm trying to think where, um, uh, yeah, this, okay. I think I've got it here. Um, so Elaine Cole, um, oh, we can't do that. So let's see here. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, let me try and share again if I, no, that's not it either. <laughs> okay. What's up? So, okay, so I'm gonna have to look um, again for my, um, hang on a second, sorry. Um, everybody's here. I'll have to go back uh, to last night. There we go. This happens to me all too often. <laughs> okay, let me try it again, see if it opened. Um, uh, darn it. Okay, so I'll have some, <laughs> let's have a toast. I'll get I'll get uh, Elaine. So Elaine Co has recorded a video for me, and I had it up. Had everything up. Um, uh, I've got flowers for all of you. Um, I've got chocolates for all of you. But and we're going to give away a book, and we're going to give away chocolates here. So in the chat window, um, I've got five questions, and the first question is. What, um, for a free book, what year was the School of Education built? So um, what year was the School of Education built? So in the chat window, you can put down what year it was built. Um, and the first one who guesses, who put the, who? No, people are faster than I thought. <laughs> who was the first one to put 1992, Mena? Justin. Justin is the first one who put there. Is that Justin Whiting? Mm, yes. Hi, Justin. He was the former TA in the class, the R546 class, coming to us from Utah. Justin, you won the first book. Great. You'll have to send me your address in Utah. Um, so let's have a little toast. First toast to the book. Um, for everybody, raise your glasses. That's what Elaine was going to do in the video for us. All right. Thank you and have a toast. Thank you all for joining us here this morning. And while Gerardo and Stacy and others are going to be in part one, I'll try and get my videos to work so we can have that as part of part two. Um, and so we're going to move to 
uh, the former dean of the School of Education, probably at the time the longest running dean in the entire school of it, uh, the entire university. Um, and I remember when he interviewed for the job that he got because I was one of the faculty members that were in the audience and we were very impressed with him and very glad, happy that he joined us coming from the University of Florida up to Indiana for the cold weather. He, he wanted to come up and get see snow. So Gerardo, you want to take over and then we have a few people after you. Sheila Jaganathan will be next from the World Bank and I'll introduce every person and, uh, and then you'll have a one to two minute talk, talk and then we'll go to the next person and we'll have another toast. So Gerardo. Well, thank you, uh, Kurt. And uh, just want to say how uh, delighted I am and proud to be part of this uh, project and to be able to join you today and your uh, authors and uh, people who may be participating in, in the conference. I think is a really a, a remarkable achievement. Uh, as I said in my um, preface to the, to the book, um, you know, I like to tell stories. I think that uh, stories uh, are a God's gift to helping people uh, motivate, uh, inform, and even entertain uh, audiences. And when I looked at the uh, various chapters and the thinking that went into them and what all the authors uh, were doing and conveying, um, I thought, what a wonderful way to tell the stories of people throughout the world having impact. And the thing that uh, uh, I find that everyone has in common, uh, there may be many things, but the one thing that everyone here has in common is that everyone participated in your R546 um, instructional strategies course and ultimately went on to develop their own initiative, uh, try the ideas and learn from what you had to offer and begin to have impact uh, around the world. I think that the work that you and um, uh, Marnia, uh, uh, Dr. Shu, uh, has done in compiling these stories uh, is a tremendous uh, contribution and an example of truly having impact through innovative uh, education. So I want to compliment all the authors uh, thank you, Amena, for your leadership uh, and tell you once again how grateful I am to have been a part, a very small part of this, uh, of this project. Congratulations and best wishes uh, for the success of the book and most importantly for the impact that it's going to have throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you, Gerardo. Thank you very much for coming and joining us this morning uh, and take a break from playing with grandkids. So thank you very much to, for doing that. Um, and, and we'll all visit you in St. Augustine during the coming years. Uh, so we will love to see you. And I am I'm buying a new car so I can do that. So Sheila Jaganathan from the World Bank is the second one on the list. Um, she's the head of the Open Learning Campus at the World Bank. Uh, she's got chapters in every book that I've edited except for this one. So, <laughs> so Sheila, you wanna jump in here and have a few words with us? Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, Kurt. And um, it's great to meet Kurt's network of friends. Um, apart from being an amazing storyteller, Kurt is also a friend, a guide, and a network to so many people working in the field of education, specifically distance education, uh, a remarkable achievement. First off, let me congratulate you both, Kurt and Mina, for this wonderful addition to your anthology, Transformative Teaching Around the World, Stories of Cultural Impact, Technology Integration, and Innovative Pedagogy. I'm particularly excited about this book around the concepts of innovative pedagogy, uh, because this is what is going to make a difference um, to the impact in lives and livelihoods of people all around the world. Um, so, and the storytelling aspect is powerful. I've read the book. In fact, I'm writing a review. Uh, it's it's um, really powerful, uh, uh, inspirational, and I hope it'll be read by 
almost every teacher in urban as well as rural areas so that they can make a difference to the learner uh, because education is, is one thing that is going to open doors and hugely reduce the learning poverty around the world. Now, I wanted to say a word about Kurt. I, no, no. <laughs> I, I met Kurt 25 years ago at a conference in the University of Maryland and another esteemed um, writer and colleague and professor there pointed him to me and he said, that's Kurt Bonk. He, you must look out for him. He is going places. And that's where he is today. A huge contribution to this practice. And Kurt, I wish you continued success um, and uh, contribution internationally. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Checks in the mail. Um, Dr. Zhao is with us from China. Dr. Zhao has translated two of my books. He translated The World is Open book in Chinese, as you can see here, and it sold more copies in China than in the U.S. and around the world. He also translated one of my MOOCs in Open Education uh, Around the World book. Thank you, Dr. Zhao. And he's trying to do this one. So he is trying to get his publishers to attend this session so they will um, there's two publishers in Chinese he's been trying to get. So Dr. Zhao, you want to you wanna talk a bit about uh, what's going on in China and around the world? Okay, thank you so much, Kurt. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Zhao Tianli uh, from South China Normal University. Uh, it is my uh, great honor to present the book launching party. So first of all, I want to say something about uh, Kurt in my eyes. Uh, actually, I think everybody agree with that. You know, Kurt is an excellent uh, educator, uh, tech savvy teacher, uh, productive author with very high uh, citation researcher. Uh, so uh, he is warmly welcomed by Wormka, uh, warmly welcomed the global speakers, of course, uh, is a, a warm uh, hearted friend with uh, lots of lots of humor. So many, many years ago, one of my friends, um, she was one of uh, co-authors of Kurt, uh, introduced and recommended the word is open <clears throat> to me and my students and I uh, introduced and translated it into Chinese. A couple of years ago, the second book, the MOOC and open education around the world uh, was translated into Chinese too. So they were, uh, or maybe we can say uh, both of them are warm welcomed by Chinese readers. And um, so as to the new book, the transformative uh, teaching around the world uh, with uh, inspiring, true, wonderful stories from uh, 44 te great teachers and educators around the world, enlighten, inspire, challenge and educate uh, both K-12 teachers, faculty, educators, and uh, educational researchers, I think. So story is powerful. And Kurt is a, a great storyteller. <laughs> you can see it's, he is a hub and a connect and a link to everybody in, in, uh, in this chat room. And uh, the, the stories are the stories shared by the 44 great teachers and educators are unique. Uh, devices for make sense of the word uh, transformative teaching. And uh, it's how our brains works in my eyes. So many, many congratulations to Kurt and <laughs> Mina. Um, and I think uh, I trust that your book will be uh, on the bestseller list. Uh, thank you. And thank you so much. So thank you for, for all those kind words. I will say Dr. Zhao and I got to know each other because of my humor, because he had to translate it into Chinese. And there was many, many nights on the phone saying, what does this word mean? Even translating the word open to Chinese was difficult in the world is open book. So I thank Dr. Zhao and his team. And I got to visit Dr. Zhao and his team in Guangzhou, China about seven years ago. In fact, about uh, a month or so before Mena started as a grad student at Indiana, I was in China for a while. So I was all his students who translate and spend all his time. I'm really thankful to them. I think I've got my sharing working. So I'm going to have a, this toast. I'm going to jump into a toast from Elaine Ko, who 
who wrote the book uh, Adding Tech Variety with me, which is a free book. Elaine and I now have a new version of that coming out free, a free course and book from the Commonwealth of Learning. So we're going to hear from Elaine's toast. If I got this working right, we'll see if I did. Um, I'm testing the system now. Um, so I'm going to optimize audio, I'm going to optimize sound, and Elaine will come to us right there. We'll see if we can get her. Well done. So to Kurt and Mena, once again, um, for those of you who are there, will you join me in raising your glass? Or in my case, it's a hot cup up because it's a cold winter night tonight in New Zealand. But um, raise your glasses and your cups with me to congratulate Kurt and Mina on this wonderful achievement and publication of their book. And what a wonderful um, book uh, launch ceremony. So well done, Kurt and Mena, once again. Um, congratulations and enjoy the rest of the celebrations because you deserve it. We look forward to um, seeing and hearing more and bigger outcomes and impact on lives as a result of this book. Hope to touch base soon. Take care. Well done once again. Bye-bye. So there we are, have it. And I also have... Yeah. Uh, with us a space shuttle launch for the book. So this is the first launch here, <laughs> and we have this uh, book launching into space. So thank you for joining us for this special occasion. And there it's lifting off, as you can see. So it's good to have that space shuttle lift off. Okay, I'll stop my sharing now. We have a couple more of those space shuttle liftoffs coming to us as well. Uh, my assistant, Seth, put that together for us. So uh, we now have 56 people with us. Uh, we have to uh, go to um, Dr. Bob Braumer, uh, who was uh, the head of EdTech for the U.S. Marine Corps University and also was at the University of Maryland when I met Sheila. I think he worked for the University of Maryland at the time, one of the largest universities in the world where Bob worked, and now he, he does various things. Bob, are you with us here? I am indeed. Um... From a hotel room, right? <laughs> in a hotel room back in Maryland, getting rained on. Uh, so my apologies for no video, but uh, I'd like to say I'm tech challenged, but that would be a lie. I just don't want to show the bags under my eyes this morning. So primarily, there's, there's a couple of things I'd like to say. Uh, I'll save the hagiography for later. And what I'd really like to say is not just congratulations for the innovation that's displayed within this book, but the respect that you authors and your institutions literally have, don't get enough of, primarily because you guys are out there in the wilderness trying to get people who really don't want to do online education and think that everything that you do is somewhat suspect but all of a sudden something came along that hasn't been mentioned yet called a pandemic. And all of a sudden the years and years that Kurt has put into it and all of the acolytes who happen to be online with us here uh, have discovered that they're popular all of a sudden <laughs> because online education became a requirement. And what it did show was a glaring inequity and a absolutely horrible um, preparation that the world had. And what I have to cheer you all on for is being the bulwark and the leading lights of what's going to finally get everybody to start paying attention and really start moving forward. So the 20 plus years that Kurt has put into this and all of you other people, uh, I, 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 I must tell you, I am impressed. Um, I am thankful and I see you leading the way to a much brighter future for the people uh, that we really are serving, which are the students. So Kurt, again, thank you. Thank you for including me. I'm honored to be amongst uh, the luminaries. I recommend reading any of Bob's book reviews of my various books because you will learn new words and you'll expand your vocabulary. I'm always appreciative of what Bob has to say on my writings. Um, he, he, he inspires me when I read his work and it's very thoughtful and at the same time there's a lot of good excellent metaphors in, that I learn and I pick up. 
Uh, Dodsey, we have a couple more people before we go to uh, Stacy for a, a, a toast to part one. We're running um, you know, a little, you know, so Dodsey, maybe about 30 seconds, and then we'll go to uh, Laura for about 30 seconds. Dodsey from Ottawa, working for Justin Trudeau in the office right below, and he's able to enact educational change in Canada for his ideas about um, technology enhanced learning. Dodsey. Thank you, Kurt, uh, and uh, congratulations uh, to you and uh, Mena. Uh, I read some portions of the book and my fundamental takeaway from this book is this. Beyond instruction, beyond innovative pedagogy, uh, beyond technology integration, there is an existential dimension to this book. Uh, not only because the book brought together diverse real stories around the world, uh, but the book brings direction, strategy, and hope to those struggling, both educators and learners. So, and the preface uh, cannot be clearer. I like it. Uh, the, pre the preface said that the book provides a roadmap for those stuck in the murky swamp of paradigm change and educational reform. I like that. So that is the existential dimension I'm referring to because let's face it, the resources of the people we remember the most in life are those who were useful when we were faced with adversity uh, or when we are personally or professionally challenged. So, this book fits in the ecosystem of transformative publications. So, and I will end by saying that this is not surprising though. The, imp the, the impact conveyed in this book just reflects the spirit of the people behind the project. Uh, Kurt has been a long time mentor to me and I met him first in Finland uh, in 2014 at the Ed Media Conference. And I had the privilege of meeting uh, Mena as well in 2019 in Toronto at the AERA -E Conference. So the educational vision is just what is reflected in this book. And thank you again. Thank you, Dazi. And again, I appreciate the 18 hour drive down from Ottawa to attend the Saturday class. Um, that was that was the furthest anyone has ever come other than people like Turu coming from Finland by plane and Dr. Rathna from India and, and others from Mahana from Singapore. I skipped Zoraini Wati Abbas. I, I apologize for skipping you, Zoraini, um, before we go to Laura. Zoraini, you want to jump in for about a 30 second, just um, uh, some words for us? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I hope my line is okay. Um, well, good. Uh, thank you so much for bringing this book out, uh, 40 stories about uh, transformative teaching. I think we all need to learn from each other and uh, the stories are coming from uh, so many corners of uh, the globe, yeah, of the world. Uh, very good. Uh, transformative teaching is not something easy to achieve. I mean, it's a challenge and it takes passion, it takes courage. Uh, so well done, uh, both of you, Kurt and Mina. Thank you so much for so having Zer me here. Thank you. You know, when Zoraini started at the Open U of Malaysia back in 2001 or so, they had no students. They grew by 10,000 students a year for the first 10 years to 100,000 after 10 years. And then when she left uh, the Open U of uh, Malaysia, she went to work for Warsan Open University in Penang, where I saw her again. I've seen her both in KL and, and Penang and all around the world. Uh, Zoraini travels well, and um, you'll probably meet up with her at some point to hear about what she's doing. And also in Indonesia, um, she's worked as well. Uh, so thank you, uh, Zoraini, for, for, for joining us today. Uh, Laura, you're a last minute addition. You want to have a few words for She's the head of our uh, global gateway here at Indiana for teachers, teacher training. And you all know the School of Education in Indiana because you're all part of the School of Education. So you know Laura probably. Laura? Thank you, Kurt. And uh, congratulations to you, Mina, and each of your chapter uh, authors on this publication. You know, in each chapter, I found inspiration and passion resilience in the face of difficult challenges, and an unwavering commitment to the learners in your classrooms. But what I love about the book 
is that in one volume, you expose your readers to teaching and learning on an international scale. And we hear a lot about the need to internationalize our teacher education programs. And your book has the potential to contribute in powerful ways to that mission. You know, there are authentic stories grounded in real classrooms and communities the world over, and they provide insights that help transform how future teachers think about schools, learners, families, and their own role in the educational process. So thank you for this opportunity to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all of you on this remarkable publication. Thank you. Well, Laura is one of the few people who have been with us. I think the whole time I've been in Indiana since 1992, you've been also part of Indiana and the School of Education. There are very few of us around anymore. So uh, it's really the, my honor to have you join us here today. Martha Nikos is one of the others, and uh, Elizabeth Bowling is, is the other. So um, yeah, so I've known Laura for a long time and work with uh, uh, with. Uh, the field work with teacher training in the reservations, in, in Native American reservations is, is phenomenal. Um, Chung Lee, I think, has joined us. Chung Mi Lee, who could have been my advisee and decided for some reason going to the University of Toronto, but I, we're still close collaborators. And um, I'm inspired by her reading her work and what she has to say about open universities um, and her leadership at a very young age. She just did one of her first keynote co conferences in your, Europe. Um, Kenmi, you want to say a few words? Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. So I want to congratulate you two. But um, just two things that I want to really uh, highlight uh, based on my reading of the book. Uh, the most important thing that I appreciate the most uh, from the book is that it put the teachers and teaching at the center. I think we've been talking too much about learner-centered learning. I mean, student-centered learning and student-directed learning, often we forgot about, and we just imagine students do the transforming learning by themselves, but it's really not true as we can read from all the teacher struggles and their intention. Um, so I, I really like this, uh, this to be our focus that every single learner behind them, we have dedicated teachers. And that's the volume what it suggests that, um, uh, you know, the highlight, the most to me. And just secondly, briefly, I really like the fact that a lot of struggles, it's not really fancy kind of successful story. We, we have a lot of them going around every single social media. And I feel a bit sick of it now because everyone is super good teachers. Uh, but it's really nice to see that everyone intended very different uh, positive changes in very different nature that we couldn't really imagine. And then also, it just really tells us that it's very difficult to make changes, even within a single classroom. And I, those two kind of points, so teaching at the center and also struggles or, um, you know, uh, the difficult nature, uh, nature of the change that teachers have been intended. Those are two take on from me. Thank you. Thank you. And Kyung Mi did her dissertation on the Open U in Korea, that Korean National Open U, and in Canada at the Basque University. Uh, I recommend her work. She is now in Lancaster University in the UK as the co-director of the Center for Technology Enhanced Learning and also has a journal that she co-edits called Technology Enhanced Learning. So she's doing a lot at a very young age and be a future. Bob, when you're talking about future leaders and Sheila, you have to keep your eye on Kyung Mi and, and people like Mena and others who are with us today. Um, so we have a couple more before Stacey will end this, this round. Um, Edgar Leon from uh, Puerto Rico uh, has been dealing with not only COVID, but Hurricane Maria after effects and earthquakes and corruption of the government. And the list goes on and on and on. And, and Edgar could inform us of all that uh, stuff that, that have happened, tropical storms and you name it, they've had it. Um, my, my class was able to create a mobile learning guide for teachers in Puerto Rico a few years ago. And, um, and, and Edgar has been uh, very much, I think, uh, an advocate for technology enhanced learning in Puerto Rico where he can. So I, I know you can talk for two hours, but for in, in a minute, Edgar, when, uh, tell, us, tell us what's going on there. Well, uh, thank you. Good morning to everybody. It's good afternoon and, and good evening to some. Uh, we thank you very much and for the book, first of all, you and Mayna. It's, uh, it, it's a, I, I like the book because I'm going to use it as a textbook in one of my classes. I just, I just, you know, and uh, I was, I was emailing Kurt yesterday, last night around 11 o'clock. I don't know. <laughs> it was something else. 
the thing is, I said, I got I to gotta tell my students, you know, to come get that thing. But the most important thing about the book is that it provides us uh, uh, some insight that teaching and learning is is all around the world and that teachers uh, in, infuse their culture uh, in each one of these countries because there's not one book for all countries, but you need to somehow give all these examples of different places so you could use it, uh, these ideas. And and I really enjoy the preface. I, I, I don't want to miss that one. Uh, I thank Gerardo Gonzalez for his story, uh, because sometimes we miss that, that, that the power of education where you, uh, you can come from a country with, with barely nothing, and then all of a sudden you study, and education becomes your uh, your opportunity to to become a dean in some places. And some people forget about that, that the most important part for progress in any country is education, and that's that really does it. And the, finally, it's the access. Uh, online education provides access to those who don't, who are poor, who have hurricanes, who have earthquakes, and have, <laughs> thanks to that in Puerto Rico, we didn't stop educating students. We use online education in all forms. You know, we, we use the mobile, mobile devices, we use the computers, we use all sorts of things that we could even radio. Some people were telling me that we're using some ham radio to, to send lessons from one place to another, which is incredible. We have to talk about that later, but thank you for, for the book. It's, I, I am going to read it again, and I, I really appreciate the work that you put into it, uh, Kurt. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then we have someone from Vietnam here, Trong Phan, who works with Mena and did research with her recently. And she says she's got to go in a second. So I'll let her jump in for 10 seconds. Trong, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me, Kurt and Mena. It's a pleasure and an honor. Um, yeah, so um, I get the, uh, the book as a gift, which was uh, great, and from these two great friends and very esteemed colleagues, and um, it would be my honor to read and hopefully review the book, and I, I have to say that from what I've read so far, one third of the book, I totally, totally enjoy it. I mean, the journey of each and every teacher is there, so thank you so much for, for this um, privilege and honor. Uh, we, we have to do this, though. We have to embarrass you. Chong just got tenure at Fresno State. So everyone raise their glasses and wish and congratulate her for tenure. Um, Thank you, you guys. <laughs> she's visiting family in Vietnam, in Hue, the capital of Vietnam, which I happened to visit back in 2014, eight, eight years ago. It's a lovely place. Anyone can get to Vietnam. I'm sure Laura's been to Vietnam, right, Laura? No, she well, you need to go, Laura. <laughs> yes, welcome to Vietnam. Anyone who wants to come, let me know. If I'm here, I would love to be here too, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tron. So we've got Lori Tang coming from China in a future education academy and, and division of, of higher ed. Is she with us this morning? It's evening in China. Lori, are you there? I don't know if I see you. I am here. Okay. I am very much here, and thank you so much for inviting me, and congrats to you, Kurt and Mena. I think this book exemplifies how learning can be transformative for students and teachers when um, authentic learning environments and endeavors are uh, really considered and provided. So I'm very um, impressed about that. But the stories also offer a very, very much a reflective perspective where readers can dive right deep into their core for what education is really about. And I think that's very inspiring for me, especially as I'm a person, I'm a counselor, a psychologist. So um, I actively promote a reflective thinking and reflective teaching. So I see examples of that all over the book. And um, so uh, the problem solving, the creative, um, um, uh, uh, the teachers uh, create relevancy to not just in the classroom, but in the world around, surrounding them. That was so um, respectable. And transformation, transformation happened for both the learners and instructors, especially in situations where uh, the resources are very scarce and uh, yet, but the creativity was very abundant. 
Now here at Xi'an Zhao Tong Liverpool University in Suzhou, China, where I'm at, we just finished our annual Innovative Teaching Award Finals. And one of the things uh, for this year we're hoping to promote for the years to come is to empower uh, our participants, the instructors, uh, when it comes to our um, competitions and teaching award competitions, uh, we, we, we encourage them to find ways to, to create systematic impact for their innovation. So I want to um, make a toast to you, Kurt and uh, Mena. Uh, we have lots of innovative teaching cases here and hope that one day we can collaborate and we can be in your book as well, if you want to do that. So Lori is originally from Taiwan. I do have my Taiwan glass with me oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's to you. Right, right, right. And I just so, moved out from Canada too, so I saw some of my Canadian fellow. So you can probably hear a Canadian <laughs> accent. <laughs> I love Canadian accent. <laughs> thank so, you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you everyone for part one. Um, we have part two. Part three we might not get to, but that's okay. We'll have everyone at least say something uh, in here. But um, we have Stacy Maroney, our current Dean of the School of Education. That is one thing all of you who are on my list and were in the book, everyone in the book is familiar with the School of Education because you are there for the fall semester of either 2014, 15, 17, 18, or 19. So Stacy, you want to jump in here and have the final um, speech for round one. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to everyone. Um, I also want to um, extend my congratulations to Kurt and Mena for this really, truly transformative book. Um, when Kurt invited invited me to do the afterword, um, I very quickly said, yes, I'm, I would love to do this. And we were headed up and, and the timeline was such that I would receive the draft right around the time that I was going on vacation and we were going to Mexico. So I printed out the draft in paper form because I knew I would be moving around a bit. And so this, this book went everywhere with me. It went to dinner, it went to breakfast, it went to the beach. And so it was kind of a mess by the time I got home because it was, you know, it had, it was well-traveled, but that was because I couldn't put the book down. And so I packed other books and they remained unread. And this was the book that I spent my vacation reading and it was so inspiring. And um, it was just an honor to offer some thoughts as, an, as the afterword for the book. So um, thank you for allowing me to be part of this truly important book. Thank you, Stacy. I really was delighted when you said yes. <laughs> there was no backup plan. <laughs> you're, you're the only current dean of the School of Ed that I know. So Gerardo wrote the foreword. Stacy wrote the afterword. So I've asked them, although maybe they didn't hear me because it wasn't it was via email. It wasn't spoken. I've asked them to make toast number two for us. So Gerardo and Stacy, uh, maybe Gerardo start and Stacy can end the, the second toast and we'll and I have actually poured in my wine glass. It's more early. This is this is great for uh, pomegranate juice, but but it looks like wine. Um, so Gerardo, a little too early for wine for, for wine for me, but with my coffee cup in hand, I want to offer a toast to you, Amina, and all the authors. And for the future, because what your book does is brings the future to today throughout the world. And so congratulations and best wishes for continued success to all of you. Do you hear? And Stacy. And I will just echo what my um, good colleague Gerardo just said. This is truly such an important book and it will be transformative. So um, cheers. Cheers again to everyone. So I will jump in here and show the, if I can, the second clip that Seth uh, created, and I of course have to find it here. It's it's hidden on me again, um, but I... <laughs> Dr. Bunk. Yeah. Hi, this is Ramsey. So I, I I gotta leave soon too. So may I just jump in and then say some words? Sure, Ramsey. My, so sorry for you know interrupting yeah. your 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 you know um, your agenda. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, depending on your location. So uh, and then I so I I feel really lucky uh, because you know um, 
I, I before I uh, took this class, I TA this class with Dr. Bong, and this is another Saturday where when Dr. Bong brought all these great people together. Thank you so much for that, and then congratulations on your achievement with Dr. Uh, Dr. Ju uh, for this book. I haven't had chance to read the book yet, but I am excited, and then I can't I can't wait to uh, start reading. So yeah, I just want to you know just like uh, come today and then uh, uh, congratulate you on this achievement, and thank you so much for inviting me as well. So so there are two former TAs, three for because Maine was a TA in five forty six. So was Ramsey, and so was Justin, and Justin who's kind of still working on his dissertation, but we won't talk about that. Justin, you want to say a couple of words from Utah for us, because early morning, it's like, you know, like 5.30 in the morning there. So, Justin? Yeah, I, I, I love the class and then, and then helped uh, TA it as well. And the thing that I love so much about all of this and, you know, seeing all of you from all over the world, normally you'd think, you know, Utah is pretty far from, I, from Indiana, right, in a, in a call like this, but many, many people much further. But um, I, I was reading through the, the syllabus of the class again last night that you sent, Dr. Bonk, and, and just reminded me, you know, even the syllabus just was such a perfect reflection of the, the strategies of creativity and trying new things. Um, I, I think about that often. I'm, I'm an instructional designer in healthcare for Intermountain Healthcare out here in Utah and work to improve learning for doctors and nurses and then even patients. But like even even the examples of, you know, in the syllabus, you have a list of, okay, for your assignments, here's a list of seven options that you can choose from. And then number eight, if you don't like any of the first seven, propose your own version and, you know, and, and you can do something else. And it was really such a great class where people could, you know, really do things that were impactful for them. And I always really appreciated that about, about your classes, that they were always meaningful, made you try harder and do things that were going to be impactful for you. So congratulations. And yeah, so thanks to... So so great to hear all these wonderful stories. So, and I just got a thank you, Justin. I just got a little text from Fiona, and she's getting foggy there. It's after midnight in New Zealand, and if she's still with us, if you want to say something, Fiona, and join in here, um, I'm not sure if she had to leave or not. Um, Fiona, I think she just departed. So I appreciate her and Simon showing up here. And I realize it's late for Simon as well. I know if Sue Tapa's here as well, um, but we'll. Sutapa, are you with us? Coming from um, Auckland. Uh, so the second question to win a free book is, <laughs> after Stacy did that, um, that toast, is what year did Dr. Stacy Maroney arrive at Indiana University? The first one you can say, tell us, or the closest year will get a free book. So guess a year that she arrived in Indiana, or you can go to the about School of Education. It's in there on the page on the page of the School of Education under the welcome from Stacy. Um, so Olga, no, it's not 2011. Sorry, um, you're not even. Well, I shouldn't say you're not even close. <laughs> uh, uh, Edgar, oh, that's that's maybe when she became the the, the dean, interim dean, perhaps in 2020. Uh, but that's not when she arrived. She was long uh, a vice president of learning technologies and uh, for the whole campus. So we've got a couple of guesses, 2008, no, it's 1999, no, 98, no, 94, no. Ah, Simon, 1997. So Simon actually has a book. And so I'm, I'm going to send the one who got second close, Meng Wan Zhao, Meng Wan, you will get some chocolates in the mail and the book, because Simon will donate the extra book to you. Thank you, Simon, if you're correct. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I think it's getting, uh, so Mena, write this down. Justin gets one book, and um, Meng Wan from uh, up at IPUI gets the other one. So, so we have three more books to give away. We'll go to Simon, because I know Simon is getting late in New Zealand. So now we're going to go to the authors. These are different people who contributed to the book. And then Mena and I will have our um, reflections, and then we might have to call an end because this is getting kind of long. So if everyone, the remaining people, maybe just live it to 30 seconds for everybody so we can get as many people as we can in. Um, I know some of you have a couple minutes prepared, so just um, we'll, we'll run around the second part here. 
And um, I'll start with Simon since he was the first one here and he's the latest <laughs> there. Um, so uh, Simon McMillan from Dunedin, where they grow urban farms for kids. Simon. Uh, kia ora, kia ora tato. Good, hello everyone. Uh, good, I wanted to go back to um, so this is the basis of the book, really, which was that R546 class and um, just how much I appreciated it uh, being a way to explore education again. And the fact that um, it was a very liberating time for us to try new things, to have a go. And it was a creative time as well. And I really liked it that it was so collaborative with people all working together and sharing their experiences so willingly and openly. So thank you very much for that, because I think that's also one of your achievements uh, with your TAs and, and yourself. And just a couple of short memories, and I, I'm sure this will bring back memories for many people. I, one of the memories for me are things like purple ties or T-shirts underneath T-shirts or um, Elton John type glasses and purple wigs. You know, what a performance. It was just lovely to be there and uh, to, to be part of that and, and a very special experience. So thanks very much. That's my 30 seconds. Thank you, Simon. It was a community. You know, that's the thing about that class that was really, that's why we did the book, to bring everybody back, right? Mohamed, you're the second one here. You want to jump in? Yeah, hi. Uh, so I'm just going to make it short uh, because I think it's different hours, it's different time zone. So I'm Mohana from Singapore. I think I just want to just share the journey. Uh, it was pretty exciting when uh, Kurt invited me. Uh, to write a chapter, but I didn't realize how the journey is going to be. I nearly got uh, occurred a heart attack uh, because I thought this was just a piece of a chapter, but it went all the way to the perm sack uh, in Singapore, and it went through that clearance. So perm sack in Singapore is just just one level below the Minister for Education. So I didn't realize how it was. So I just want to say thank you to Kurt as well as Vienna. Uh, it was an amazing journey. So mine is chapter 11. And um, so now I'm actually putting into practice uh, things in the school. And particularly of interest is, uh, you know, teacher development. And our focus currently in Singapore is on e-pedagogy. So it's very much in terms of, you know, home-based learning and how we can get students to be self-directed. So every two weeks, our students actually get to study from home. And we want to see how we can do this and how we can actually prepare our teachers uh, to level up, okay, especially in the area of e-pedagogy. So thank you very much, Kurt and Miana, once again. I thoroughly enjoyed my Saturdays uh, in IU and uh, looking forward to many exciting things ahead. Thank you. And I will say it did give me a near heart attack when they almost had to pull, uh, you know, her chapter. So um yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a really, uh, yeah, <laughs> we were lucky, <laughs> we were lucky that <laughs> they had finally approved it, but we had to delete a few words here and there. Um, Nazir, you're not on the list, but since you're in Singapore, you want to tell the people what your title of your article is real quick, or so your chapter, and um, just a couple of words about it. Thank you, Prof Bong. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, greetings from Singapore again. Uh, Mohan, I just spoke from, from, from where I am as well. The title of my chapter is Fostering Student Motivation and Engagement Through the Relevant Appealing and Personal Pedagogical Guideline. Quite a mouthful, but, but, but that's something that we find that even in even online lessons and all, what motivates students to even want to watch the videos or, or want to attend the lessons. Uh, E-learning alone doesn't get them to want to, the drive to want to do it. Uh, and I've been reading through the other chapters and congratulations to everyone. It's so lovely to meet all my fellow Fulbrighters uh, from the 2016 batch in IU. So yeah, greetings from Singapore and congratulations, uh, Prof Vong and Dr. Zhu once again. You've got a pedagogical method with an acronym. What is that acronym and method? It's, uh, it's the RAP pedagogical guideline. It stands for Relevant, Appealing and Personal Pedagogical Guideline. Some people just call it RAP. <laughs> so I had a testament if I actually knew what it stood for. Okay, he does. Um, we should go to Finland. And Sana's coming from us to us from Finland. She was one of the first ones here. Sana, are you still with us? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Finland. Um, and thank you. I'm very honored to be in the in the book. It's been a wonderful experience. Um, what I found great about since I have the book here, and I've been reading it. Um, 
it, it's been wonderful to see that all around the world we we tackle with similar kind of problems all of us teachers so it, it's it's not different uh, anywhere so this is what what I like about the book the most and I'm very honored and thankful that I'm I'm part of it and congratulations to Kurt and Mena hope to see you uh, in person someday so thank you everyone and it's great to see that there are so many people here today thanks my career got its start really boost by going to Finland so I will I will say that people in Finland are delightful do I will visit again um, they're they're very kind when I went there in 97 with my kids actually so um yeah i'll be back i we have two other people from finland here um they're not on the list to say anything but if toru or the other person who's here from finland want to jump in and say something to us are they still with us is toru still here no okay um how I about guess, oh, go ahead go, go, yep I was, like Sanna said, I was really um, honored to, to be um, asked to, to write a chapter and I'm really looking forward to reading reading the book. Unfortunately, I haven't got my copy yet. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully it will come soon. And hi to Nasir and, and Simon and everybody from 2016. It's so great to see you. Hi, Maya. <laughs> It is great to connect everyone back together. I wish we could get all the dozens and dozens of folks that visited um, that were inspiring to me. Uh, do we have Yassine here from Morocco? Did he arrive? My, he was my assigned mentee. Um, I haven't seen him yet. May not have you seen Are you there? There you OK. Ha, great. I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, um... Hello, first of all, I'm Yassim from Morocco. Um, I'm a Fulbright alumnus 2017. Uh, I just wanna give a special thanks to you and Ms. Mena for the huge work you did communicating with 44 teachers around the world and receiving tons of emails and writing us back like on the spot. That is just, is just like an amazing work. I'm also very proud and honored to be part of this project. This is like the first time I have published something and it, it, it has been a, a very, very wonderful experience. And yeah, to more inspiring and creative books like this one. <laughs> All right. This, your independent project that you did ended up being the book, the start to your book chapter. So I was really glad to see the, the writing you did at IU ended up uh, on, on the use of kids' use of media and media development and having students be producers of, of their own knowledge, in effect, and, and, and documentaries and whatnot, uh, using the technology that exists uh, that you had. And buy, he's, he spent his, his salary to buy kids' technology, you know, and, and to get it, get it started. So, yeah, all that was, uh, it's a fascinating chapter. Um, uh, we have a couple people maybe from Yemen. Is, is Ibrahim and Amani here who from our language education program, they're current students dissertating right now. Um, did either one, I know they were trying to get, to get here. Are either one with, with us? I think I saw Abraham. I don't they, know. they maybe had to leave. Ibrahim, are you still with us? Maybe you can't get his mic. Um, uh, is the other Simon with us from language education? From Rwanda? He was trying to make it here. Um, Charan, did you make it? Charan should be here. Charan, you want to mute your mic? And, yeah. Okay, you want to say anything? Charan also was part of the task force uh, that Stacy may remember, the uh, visioning task force. She went to China and did some hybrid learning, um, having teaching kids in the rural parts of China English. Um, it's a fascinating chapter. Uh, I, I, I was on her dissertation and, it, and she won the Outstanding Dissertation Award with that. So her chapter and, and her, her uh, dissertation are really, really thoughtful. Um, Charan? Yeah, uh, thank you, Kurt and Mina, for uh, such a wonderful book project. And I really like it because it has all the best elements, stories, global perspective, transformative teaching, technology for uh, advances in education. So uh, uh, my chapter is from my field experience from my dissertation work as Kurt just mentioned. I appreciate that it allows me 
this book allows me to share my experience that I would otherwise not be able to write in other ways. Uh, and I'm sure many of the other uh, chapter contributors have the same feelings. Uh, and I'm so inspired by all of your stories. Uh, I think the stories are not only powerful, but also creative. Uh, I mean, just look at the titles in the books, for instance, energy, sound me, energy, catch me. Um, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. So uh, chicken or egg, so I really uh, having a lot of fun and get a lot of inspirations from reading this book. So thank you so much. So Tehran is at Colby College in Maine, running the Writing Center and a new tenure, a tenure track professor there as of a year ago. Dr. Rathna from India, do you want to jump in and say hello to us? I know you didn't get a book yet. And I apologize. We'll try and get books to everybody. They were sent out late. Um, and we're going to have two more people go, and then Mena and I will have our, our, our reflection and a toast. And we'll probably have to end it because we're a little over an hour. I promised only an hour, and I apologize to everyone else who has something prepared. Dr. Ratna, did you want to jump in? Yeah. Are you still here? Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Bong and uh, Mena. Thank you so much for uh, making this event because I could see a lot of uh, you know educations throughout the world. And I'm so happy to see Mr. Uh, Sana. Yasin, all my friends, Fulbrighters 2017. And in fact, even if I did not, even though I did not get the book, I some chapters I could read as my friend Edwin has sent some of the you know, <laughs> chapters, took photographs and <laughs> sent it to me. So I could read some of the chapters, really wonderful. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to be a part of this, uh, this uh, great uh, you know, uh, book. Thank you so much, uh, Bonk. I cannot forget your 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 help which you have rendered me when you were, when I was in Maybe. US in in, in uh, uh, Bloomington. Thank you so much and hi to my friends. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Rasta, and it was a joy to have you with us here. Hope to visit in India. Um, Diana's with us, who's traveled around. She was in Mexico. She was in Malta. She was in Scotland. I don't know where Diana is now, but she did global collaboration between her students in Mexico and students in France and other places. Diana, did you want to? Say something. Dr. Bonk, I'm, I'm here as well, Ibrahim. Okay, Ibrahim, you want to say a few words? Yeah, thank from... you very much. Uh, uh, it is a great honor to to be one contributor of this great work. Uh, nice to represent Yemen and, and uh, in the Middle East, and people in the Middle East will enjoy reading experiences throughout the, the world. Thank you very much for being with you. Thank you. And is Amani with you there? Yes, Dr. Bong, I'm here. I feel honored to be part of this great project. Congratulations to all of us. Um, the book is very informative, motivational, and applicable to any uh, scholars who's going to read the, the chapters. Thank you very much, Dr. Bong and Mina, for including us in this great book. Is your baby with you? Yes, he's there. <laughs> I was not a baby anymore. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so they have two chapters on what's going on in Yemen. I recommend highly um, if you if you have a chance to, to get through them. Edwin is with us from Singapore as well. Did you want to say a quick word of a hello? He's usually texting me in the mornings. Um, uh, Omida is here. Omida? Would you like to jump in? Sure. So hello, everyone, and congratulations, Dr. Bonk and Mena. Dr. Bonk shared this book release in the morning of a special date, so I want to express my excitement in a poetic form. Waking up was a surprise in the morning of 222, celebrating together a story of our learning journey learning in lockdowns, discovering endless possibilities. Thank you, dear mentors and creative teachers for empowering people and sharing your knowledge. What a special day to wake up together with exceptional people around the world, being excited, staying inspired and encouraged. Thank you, dear authors and great professionals for transforming education, making an impact and feeling proud embracing new ideas and experiences, sharing our labor of love, exploring narratives, 
rejoicing together with a book in our hand. Thank you all. You are all truly global leaders. Let's celebrate your milestone and our happiness. Thank you. Thank you, Amida. She works for Indiana University and she's from Uzbekistan. You can read about teacher training in Uzbekistan. Again, there's just a couple more I'm going to get through and then we're going to end this. Um, Natalia from Costa Rica, finishing her dissertation right now. Natalia, I see you're with us. You want to, you've got uh, one of the chapters in the book. Um, Natalia, do you have a camera and microphone? Yeah, um, yes, I think. Um, yeah, yep, you're... everything is on. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Dr. Bonk um, uh, suggested uh, that I could talk about my experience writing um, uh, the chapter that I chose. And um, when I got the invitation, Dr. Bonk and Mayna mentioned the word impactful learning, which we have been um, mentioning once and again to this morning. Um, and after reading other stories in the book, I saw that um, many of the stories or most of the stories, if not all, are about relationships. And I think that that's where impactful learning happens when we have, when we are able to connect with students and create meaningful relationships with them. Um, impactful learning doesn't come unless there is a construction um, of uh, meaningful relationship. Um, that is also what we were able to construct in our classes. Um, I think I was in the class in 19, I mean, 2016, 2017, maybe. Um, I was with Simon and Sana and um, Edwin. Um, and it was a wonderful community, as Dr. Bank mentioned before. And um, for me, this whole process, um, just being here and part of uh, the, this program and now part of this book has been impactful learning. So um, I'm making it more about teacher-centered, like someone uh, mentioned. Um, but yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Bonk and Mena, uh, for creating these relationships that are impactful also for us. Thank you. So we've got Central America covered. We didn't get Mexico yet. And I see Alba's with us. She might be the last author I haven't called on yet. So um, let me know if, yeah. So Alba, do you have your microphone working? Yes. Good morning, everyone. For me, it's 5 a.m., 5.39. I'm so happy in seeing all of you. Um, thanks, Dr. Kerr, for having invited me, uh, Maina. Uh, it was a great experience. It was a fierce experience. Just what I, what could I say? We are teachers, I think, because we have a huge heart and we have to share. And doing it, we think and I think we really believe that we are contributing or making a better work. When we have a students in our classrooms, they are safe there. They are not outside doing who knows what things. So when students are inside with us, they are growing as a better human beings, better students, better citizens. And we teachers, we grow up with them. Uh, my journey as a teacher was uh, amazing. I started uh, when I was 28, 29. I was so immature, so self-centered in myself, being young at that early age. Uh, and, and, and you start teaching and you change a lot as a human being, as a teacher, as a woman. Uh, it's, um, I, um, it's almost the huge change that a woman has when it gets into motherhood, something like that, that it's slower, something, sometimes it's painful because I remember that I cry a lot in my classroom asking them for, um, using time wisely. And I, I also cry a lot laughing and laughing. So being a, being a teacher, it's, some, it's most of the time the most wonderful thing that a human can do in your sharing. I suppose we have to share that that's a need that we have as teachers. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy in seeing you here. And I'm so happy in reading all the comments. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mayna. It's it's great. Bye. Thank you, Alva, and thank you for the great chapter. We only have one author I forgot I skipped over is Yan from China. Yan. She was one of the first ones here. Are you does your microphone work, Yan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Bonk? Yes. Oh, thank you, Bonk. Thank you, Mayla. I'm really flattered to be invited to take part in this great project. Actually, I attended uh, Bonk's class in 2016, IU, uh, where I learned to be, uh, you, you said a great example for us teachers to be always energetic and impressive. Uh, my story is actually an application of what I have learned in IU to my own Chinese air to writing classroom. Uh, I attended a writing class uh, which, uh, which aims to train uh, the PhD students to, to, to conduct air two writing to long uh, native speakers, especially students from China. So after uh, observing those PhD students classes, I applied what I have learned there to my own classroom, uh, which uh, really makes difference in writing instruction. Uh, so anyway, uh, I know the time is limited. I just try to bring my speech to the end. <laughs> Thank you, Mina and uh, Bonk, to making my story heard by others and also allowing, allowing access to other stories. I can't change the world by myself, but I think that we as teachers, we are changing the world together. Thank you. So that's the last person of our chapter contributors um, that's here with us. There are others here, I think, with us. I want to get three people to just to say their names on camera so we get them on the video. My translator in Korea is here, Paul Byun, who's a grad of the IST program. Paul, you want to just say hello from um, Seoul or from Chungbuk? I think you're here, Paul. Maybe he, had, he sent a note in the chat window that he had to go and he wanted us to read it. Mayna, do you see his note in the chat window? I think so. Yeah. Do you want to read it, Mayna? I have to find it. There are so many. See, see if you can. Olgan, you want to just say hello and what university you're from? Sure. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I want to send you my uh, warm greetings from uh, Trabzon countryside of Turkey. So let me show you where am I. So right now, so I'm celebrating uh, religious nation all day here. So um, I was one of the students in Dr. Bank's class, and I'm currently Actually, I was teaching a same similar class, uh, not as much as successful as Dr. Bong's class in my current institution at Middle East Technical University. Um, so um, it's called Emerging Learning Environments and Technology. So I just cheated and learned a lot from Dr. Bong and now applying that knowledge in my uh, current school now in Turkey. So um, uh, congratulations on your uh, new book. I wish I had the opportunity to to write a chapter, uh, but next time, uh, Dr. Bank promised me, so I will be involved. So um, thank you. So we should probably congratulate Yogan because he just became an assistant professor. They just give him a rank as of uh, last month. So congrats to Olgan. Have a little toast here. Thanks so much. Thank One of the you. best universities in Turkey, um, Middle East Technical University. And Suthi Porn coming from Bangkok. I think you are the first one here. One of them. Are uh, you still with us, Suthi Porn? She was my yeah. research partner in Wikibooks about 15 years ago uh, and graduated in, in the CNI department with a minor in IST. Suthi Uh Yes. Um, I just want to say um, congratulations to all of you, not just uh, Kurt and Mina, that um, they came up with a new book and really excellent um, academic resources, I think. And um, I because my research is about teacher professional development. So I found this book is really inspiring and uh, it's a great, um, great time that I have a chance to hear from you all and contributors uh, from the book and feel like really original and um, transformative teaching is really hard for me. I think it's, um, it takes time to learn and it's, um, I like this book. I think it's really um, contextual and uh, provide me a uh, the chance to broaden my horizon. So it's really great to be here and um, to hear from you, especially the contributors. So thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for joining us. And I see Edwin's got his camera on. You want to tell us where you're from, Edwin? Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Edwin from Singapore. Uh, I was not supposed to be in Kurt's 
class, but he invited me and I think we remain good partnership with friends. He invited, he asked me to write a chapter and I think I said yes, just before the due date. I, I've got no regrets. I use your contributions to share with my teachers and my kids. It's really a perk me up book. Best of all, it's a good reflection of what I do in class, who am I, and what I can do all the time. Because I think education for our kids is the most important matter. Thanks, Kurt. Edwin was not supposed to be in my class, but we stuck him in anyways. <laughs> and we've got a good friendship ever since. So I was really delighted that you could be uh, in the class. So thank you very much. And uh, I just want to make sure there isn't anyone who, um, so Jung Hoon Lee, I don't know if you have his camera, but he took uh, 20 years to finish his PhD, but he finally got done a year ago, got his doctorate a year ago. And you've been, I see you're somewhere in here. Jung Hoon? Hi. Hi, Kurt. Yeah, it, it's my honor to be invited in this book party because I'm not an author of a chapter. Um, yeah, I sincerely congrat congratulate Kurt and Mina for this achievement. Also, so, I, I would like to congratulate all the authors of this book. He is from Korea, mm -hmm. and he met his wife in the IST lab and now has two kids living in Bloomington and works for the School of Public Health. So thanks, Jung Hoon. Um, he started in 2000. We got him through in 2020. Um, that was great. Or 2001, 2021. So, Mayna, um, would you like to read Paul's and would you like to have a final um, comment? And then I'll make a final comment and we'll have a final toast. Mayna, did you find Paul's comments? Hold on. I, I did find and then I, I missed it because I, I there, read another comment. There's lots of stuff going across the screen. I've gotten emails from different people. And my friend David Gibson just said, uh, your work is promoting creative educational technology and is world changing. Uh, you lift people up with this book and there'll be a lot of people benefiting. May this book get on everyone's reading list today. Um, uh, David Gibson's a futurist. He was in, uh, in, Laurie just had him as a keynote speaker in China a couple of weeks ago or maybe last week. Uh, so I was glad to get his comments and many others. Mayna, have you found it yet? Yes. Um, Go ahead. From Paul from Korea, uh, he said to save time and make a, re a reading record, I would like to make a comment in writing. Personal experience is powerful. Actually, this is a way of benchmarking method, which is commonly done a lot in business world. There's a, a limit to learning along. Learning from the best practices in the field is the most efficient and effective. Uh, even more, I believe, while writing this book chapter, each author would have uh, reflected up on their uh, selves and have improved and evolved a higher level as even a better teacher. This book is a great, in many ways, congrats again to Kurt and me. Thank you, Paul Byun, from coming from Korea. Um, Mena, would you like to make a final comment? I'll make mine and we'll end with a toast. Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this virtual uh, uh, luncheon party. And I hope you are enjoying this so far. Uh, to be honest, this is the first book that I edited in my life. And uh, I want to say thanks to all the book chapter authors and forward afterwards uh, authors and book endorsers, and also the book editor from Broadlage. And I really enjoy working with all of you uh, through this project. And also I want to say thanks to all the friends who can join this party today and also who couldn't make because of different reasons. I appreciate all your support. Um, uh, least but last but not least, I truly appreciate the support and guidance from uh, my former advisor uh, and my co-editor and my lifelong mentor, Dr. Bank. Uh, he's very supportive through all this journey. And I'm very fortunate to be able to work with Dr. Bang. Uh, finally, I hope you all like this book and enjoy this uh, virtual launching party. Thanks. Thank you, Mayna. And I just got a text from Praktisha, who's with us from India. Do you want to jump put your camera on the screen before I have the final closing, Praktisha? It's not working so far. I... Maybe she doesn't, maybe she had to go, but I, her chapter is extremely deep and thoughtful. If you have a chance to read Praktisha's chapter, by, by all means do. Um, I want to just point out that this book was uh, my last, 
people want to ask what I did in my summer of 2021. It was this book, what I did in my summer vacation, you know. Um, it was it was quite a quite a fun project, but challenging uh, every step of the way. Working, getting the publisher to have the book come out the way I wanted it. All of you who are part of the book are part of four families. You're part of now the IU family. You're all here at IU at one point or another. You're you're also part of the School of Education uh, and. And permanently the IU School of Education, everybody who contributed to the book. This is actually the second book of mine that's all IU School of Ed. I had a book 25 years, a quarter century ago, of research of going on in the School of Ed that came out in 1990, late 97, dated 98. Um, and then you're part of the R540, R546 family, which I've taught for 30 odd years, I hate to say it, since I was eight years old. And so you're part of those three families. And you're also part of this book, uh, the, the Transformative Teaching Around the World book family. So I hope that people have a chance to discuss this book with their classes, with their colleagues, with each other. You know, the people who have contributed the chapters might hopefully get to meet up. I know some of you have weddings and others fly out to, to meet each other at the wedding. Um, so there are four distinctive families that you're part of. I hope uh, we can continue the conversation that we've had within the book to make an impact on education around the world to help, help it be more creative, foster critical thinking, foster collaboration and cooperative learning, motivation, and technology integration. Those are the five themes in the particular class that you took. That was a course that evolved over time from the first iteration back when I was at West Virginia University to today, which has all five components. It started with just creative thinking and critical thinking because my advisors at Wisconsin were focused on, the, on that. And so um, I thank my advisor, Gary Davis, for his Creativity is Forever book and my mentor, Dr. Bob Clawson at Wisconsin, who taught me that teachers tackle thinking, critical thinking in the classroom. We developed a telecourse for teachers for critical thinking back in 1988 and 87 that was nationally syndicated on critical thinking, which led to that course. Dr. Clawson was also my teacher as I got ready for graduate school at Wisconsin when as a board accountant, I took courses and correspondence courses to get ready for graduate school. And Dr. Clawson taught the courses in gifted and talented and creative thinking that I took to get ready for grad school. Then he hired me when I got to grad school to create that syndicated course with his wife, Donna Ray Clawson. So that's my evolution and how that we all, that's, if it wasn't for Dr. Bob Clawson and Donna Ray Clawson and Dr. Gary Davis, this, this book wouldn't exist because I, I wouldn't be teaching. I would still be a board accountant somewhere around the world or, or I don't know what I'd be. So we have a couple more uh, chocolates to give away and also with books. We have um, from the Bloomington Chocolate Factory. We have the next question is how many authors, unique authors are in the book? If anyone can guess that, um, we can see who's the first one to get how many unique authors. Someone mentioned it was very close. Um, so I don't see any guesses coming so far, um, but uh, who had 45, Mena? <laughs> no, I have. The Rena oh, 45 from yeah. Yasin. Who who did? Yasin. Uh Yasin, send me your email and I will send you some things in the mail. So very good. Mohana Shupa, the authors. And Mahana too? Yeah, and Shufang. Oh. Okay. So Mahana send me and Shufang send me. Uh yeah, we'll send you a book, Shufang. And so give me your address and I'll get you something. I will end this there. Thank you for staying extra and longer. Um, if everyone could do a toast and we can get a snapshot of everyone that's here. I don't know if everyone could fit in the screen. We have 39 people. Raise your glasses. And um, thank you all for being delightful uh contributors to the book and for coming this morning or to this evening from wherever you are in the world. Great to have everyone here for this event. Cheers. Thank you all. We'll see you. Thanks, Gerardo, for staying extra, and Stacy and everyone who stayed extra. Sam Nadu, the, the distance ed editor, journal editor. Thanks, Sam, coming from Melbourne. 
we didn't have you speak, but you can say something now while we wave goodbye, Sam. You... It's all good, Kurt. It's all good. All good. We got you. We got you on the recording. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We probably got another space shuttle left off, but I'll send it. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs>